Good afternoon and welcome to my daily broadcast. Uh, my name is Barry Silvey and this is my daily um, live stream broadcast. I introduce myself first before getting to the topic. I am a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. Helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And lately, a lot of my focus has been more than anything else, a heartbreak recovery specialist. I am finding myself really diving deep with my clients to help them heal their hearts from past wounds and relationship um, mishaps. I don't know if that's the right word or not. But I did want to um, talk about this particular part of it, which is, uh, so let me back up a second. These daily talks, <laughs> which are called messages from the masculine to messages from the masculine to inspire the feminine heart, are my daily contribution to the conversation about men and women, relationships, masculine, feminine, polarity. And I've done these every day, and today's number three hundred and forty-seven. Um, so I had a lot to talk about. <laughs> and today's topic is around the idea about being a victim, and I'm going to speak to this in the context of relationship, but also in the context of the Me Too conversation, because I'm realizing there's a piece, and actually, a friend, well, I'm saying, let me say this way, a friend of mine brought to my attention yesterday a piece that's been missing about the Me Too conversation, and that's going to come up in the shortly in a moment, too. So this is number 347, and the title of this of today's broadcast is Stop Letting Your Victim Rule You. And I'll explain what that means literally in a moment, or, or what it literally means in a moment. <laughs> And also to speak to what you can do differently, because it is time to grow. Um, if you've been sitting in the victim role for some situations, and I'll explain what those might be, so you might go, oh, that's me, then the idea about growing and becoming more whole is right in front of you. And I've been through this in my own way, so I know what this is about. So I'm not speaking from theory, but from experience, and hopefully you'll get some value from this. So what does this mean? Um, simply put, the best way I can put this is that if you are still holding a grudge against somebody else as the reason why you can't have what you want because of something that happened in your past relationship, or if you're still carrying, sorry, let me give you some concrete examples rather than being theoretical. If you are, if you are running around, no, I say it's nicely. <laughs> I'm re-editing as I'm thinking this. It's coming through like, no, not that way, not this way. Let's try this way. If your past relationship really screwed you up. And he hurt, and if you're a woman and feet and straight relationship with a man, I have to contextualize everything now, and he hurt you badly. He cheated on you or he abused you or did something else and you haven't yet recovered from that. And you're using that feeling of being hurt and wounded as a reason to not go forward in your life. What you literally are doing is victimizing yourself based upon a past experience that's no longer present. If you're in a situation now that's going on, that's a slightly different story. But you're in a situation now where you're being hurt, wounded, abused, neglected, cheated on, whatever that is, and you're not choosing to get out of that situation, you're letting yourself be victimized. And there are ways out. I'm not going to go into those here. That's not my focus in the conversation. It's more about what you do after the fact. There's one other piece that was coming up. Um, okay, let's bring the Me Too conversation in right now. If For those women who, and I'm speaking opposed to the women, but there are men obviously who suffered from the Me Too conversation where they were abused by other people too. But if you're a person who's standing up in the Me Too or the Time's Up conversation because you were abused, harassed, put down by somebody who's more powerful in business than you are, First of all, I do feel you for you, and I, and I really appreciate what you had to go through and, this, and the suffering you've been through. However, or in addition to that, if you're using that as an excuse not to get what you want, if you're using that as an excuse to not go for the job you really want, if you're using that as an excuse to avoid relationship now because of what they did, you're choosing victimhood. And I'm being cautious in saying this, and I'm not saying it like confronted, I'm saying this is the reality, because... It's so easy sometimes to stay being a victim than actually take the healing journey to become whole again because there's, well, let me say this way, well, two parts. Being the victim and not doing the healing work because it's more work to do and it's better to stay the victim. First of all, it gives you more sense of being lazy because it's easy to do that, to be honest. 
Once you've been a victim, you just sit in the pit in the corner and cry and go, it's okay, I'll stay here. Rather than saying, you know what, I need to get over this and grow and become more whole. The second thing is, and this is what a lot of people don't realize they're doing, is when you stay in the victim role, especially when it's a me too or a person who's a really bad person, and you stay in the victim role, is to justify something. And so you suffer to justify the pain they dealt you. They've moved on, or they have not even aware they did it. You are aware of the pain that you suffered. And you are staying in a suffering role because you're trying to justify something. And all you're doing is staying wounded. That is insanity, to be blunt. It's an ineffective way of doing things, because if you're in a place where your wounds are still running the show, you're never going to be free. Because you're not letting yourself be free. And this is the key. You are not letting yourself be free. Those wounds don't run you. You let them run you. That's what I'm saying in the title. Don't let your, don't let your victim keep ruling you. Because you gave it the power to rule you. And that is insane. And it's not real. It's a choice that you may have made subconsciously. But it's a choice you made nevertheless. So in the context of Me Too. Or in the context of your post, own personal experiences. Where you've been in a place where you were hurt and wounded. Again, I have deep compassion for that. I care about my clients, especially you've been through that. Uh, it seems to be a theme with my clients lately. There's a lot of heartbreak and healing happening because that's the wounds that are coming up to be healed. And I'm grateful to be able to support them in that. However, or in addition to that, when you are staying in that place of wound and not getting healed, you're not doing anybody any favors, including yourself, especially yourself. You're not punishing anybody else. You're not proving a point about anybody else. You're simply stuck in the pain and wound yourself. Wouldn't it be a bit better to actually have joy in your life again? Wouldn't it be better to actually take your life back and be not only courageous, but be whole once again? There's an old quote from somewhere, who it was. Um, I have to look it up and see where the quote comes from. But the title, the, 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 um, the quote that I remember is something like, the best revenge is a well-lived life. And that, I think, is probably the best way of stating what this is about. Because if you're choosing to not live your life to the best of your ability, that's not revenge. That's not justification. That's suffering. And unless you happen to enjoy suffering, which I hope you don't, it's not recommended. So what to do? I'm, to, I'm going to cut to the chase right now because I think you've got the point right up front what I was talking about. And I want to speak to the Me Too piece as well because that's, this is a, it's been a sensitive topic. But the reality is it's, a, it's only sensitive because you don't know how big a wide... Um, area this covers it's like um <coughs> excuse me i've had a head cold this weekend that's been hitting me today so my hopefully my throat will last through the end of this broadcast been laying low today the way i have this sense about the me too conversation because it's expanding expanding and expanding expanding is is kind of like being um it's like standing on the edge of a sinkhole where the ground disappears in front of you. And you've got to start backing up. You're not sure how far you've got to back up before it's solid ground again because it keeps start falling away from you. And in a way, the Me Too conversation is expanding. So how deep this runs and how far it goes in the industries that it affects, that's a challenging thing. So there's, no, there's, no, there's no fixed outline of that. So what I'm speaking to is for those of you who have been affected by it, have been impacted and have yet to do what it takes to heal yourself. I understand the justification to want to hold um, proof that these person wronged you. Absolutely. But it doesn't mean you have to stay in hurt and wounds to do that. And part of this journey, I feel, for many of the people who are affected by the Me Too, Me Too scenario conversation experience, is a lot of them are staying there and not actually doing anything to grow beyond it and heal. Yes, there may be a desire to have revenge and to punish the people who did it to you. Yes, but you can do it from a whole place, not just from a, from a wounded place. In fact, when you do it from a whole place, you'll be a much healthier way of doing it because if you do it from a wounded place, you'll be flailing at them versus actually taking corrective action. And the reality is you won't be able to see clearly what those um, predators and um, assailants did from a neutral space if you don't do the healing work. So... Again, if you're in the Me Too conversation or it's just relationship conversation, these pieces are both transformed by your own inner journey. And 
And there's a piece there, is there not? Let me get to, let me get to the solution, because I, I jumped off the solution again, back into the, one of the issues along the way. So what to do? If you are willing, if you're ready, if you are done sticking your heart into the fire and hurting yourself all the time because you're proving something that isn't going to be proved to anybody except yourself, and you're ready to change that, the first thing I recommend you do is to start remembering that you're already whole. As crazy as that might sound, that who you are, independent of what happened to you, is a whole being. And that sounds very, maybe, um, etheric. But I'll say it this way. Nobody can take you away from you. Nobody can take you away from you. And as you claim that and remember that for yourself, you can start rebuilding your own um, self-awareness and self-support. Yes, along the journey, there's going to be some wounds to be healed. Emotional wounds, perhaps. Maybe some physical ones, but I doubt that. It's more the emotional and the mental... um, rewiring and wound healing that needs to be done and that can be done with forgiveness work that can be done with self-counseling self-support love especially because love is a powerful healing agent and getting guidance from somebody you can trust but do this do the work necessary to get you from where you were which is in the pain and hurt and wound that you had the victim area and to take role responsibly take take yourself responsibly into the place you want to be sounds simple I know and it isn't necessarily an easy journey but it's a journey that you want to take if you don't want to stay stuck in the victim again letting your victim rule you is not a recommendation for anybody so becoming master of your own victim or in fact healing and releasing that victim role completely is my recommended therapy (laughs) to take the time take the energy take the commitment to really transform and heal your life And, and I said this was inspired by a conversation with a friend of mine she made a point and then I, I read an article last night where it like, doubled the information in my head. It's like, oh yeah, this needs to be talked about. Is that, especially with the Me Too conversation and any of you who feel like you've been victims of that, yes, you are suffering from that, but being a victim of it is not required forever. You can change that experience and change your wiring and move forward in your life and have what you really want. I think I made my point. Um... This one's a pretty, pretty short broadcast. I'm glad I got through it without choking too much. Um, <laughs> if you feel like sending me some, lo- some light and healing for my, my head cold that seems to be going on, I appreciate that. But to wrap up this broadcast, um, this is an invitation, of course, to go deep in your own work, in your own lives. If you want help in the area, that's where I specialize in. If you want to get some support in the area of healing, past wounds, heartbreak, etc., um, you can start with a free gift from me, which is my complimentary clarity conversation. It's my discovery session. And if you go to my website, which is barryselby.com, you click on Let's Chat, which is on the main page. Or you can just go to barryselby.com forward slash chat, same result. You can sign up for a discovery session there, which is my free gift to you. It's a 30-minute conversation where we talk. I can give you some guidance, some next steps. And if it's something you would get interested in, we can just go back where I can help you beyond that. This is my daily Facebook Live. I do this always on Facebook, and it does go onto YouTube later on, so you can watch them either place. All of my previous broadcasts and this one on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Also on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. There is a very um, <laughs> overloaded page on my, business, on my website now, which is the video blog where these live. I'm going to refigure that out at some point to make it more approachable, and by the time you watch this, hopefully I'll get that sorted. I'm still working on that. Um, if you feel somebody should watch this and it res- resonates for them, please share it with them. And if you have any questions or comments, um, please put them below and I'll respond after I sign off. This is, this is a touchy subject for a lot of people I know. But it's also one that is a blockage to having freedom, having more love, more joy in your life. And if you want that, then take the steps. Um, homework? If you watch my broadcast before, you know I give homework every day pretty much, except for the weekends usually. This one's a quick one. Um, If you're feeling that a victim is in your life, and this is, okay, yeah, homework. Here we go. (laughs) If you're willing to do this, you don't have to. This is up to you because you're not reporting to me, so I don't have to. I'm not looking over your shoulder. But if you feel ready for this, look in your own life. Journal, sit down with yourself in the evening when you're done with the day, and look back at your life and see where you feel like you maybe didn't get what you wanted, where you still carry that energy, whether it was you got 
shortchanged by something or abused or hurt by somebody and journal about it write about how it makes you feel if you haven't resolved it notice for yourself that there's work to do and then when you get that clarity start getting help simple as that thanks for watching thanks for being with me I'll see you again tomorrow with 348 and uh, I think I covered everything I'll see you again tomorrow bye